talk a little bit about having confidence in God's power. Welcome to This Day Devo. My name is Pastor Guy Smith. I am happy to have you here with me on this Monday morning as we read Mark chapter 11, verse 15 through chapter 12, verse 12. Uh, in the entirety of this passage, we read about Jesus clearing the temple. We read of uh, the results of the cursed fig tree. We read of the authority of Jesus being challenged by the religious leaders. And Jesus telling a parable of the evil farmers uh, that are the religious leaders themselves. Do you have confidence in God's power? Do you have confidence in God's power to work in your life? Do you have confidence in God's power to truly come in the form of a man named Jesus and carry your sins to the cross? Do you truly have confidence in God's power to stand in your place? Do you truly have confidence in God's power to raise victoriously over sin, death, and hell? Do you truly have confidence in God's power to break the chains of bondage in your life? Do you truly have confidence in your power that forgiveness can be extended and received between yourself and a brother? Do you really have confidence in the power of God to answer your prayers? One of the most uh, interesting pieces of what we read today was Jesus cursing the fig tree. Uh, in our previous reading, which would have been this past Friday, in chapter 11, uh, verses 12 through 14, Jesus curses a fig tree. And in, in, you know where we stopped, it just sort of lays there, and we move forward. Where, uh, but, but it comes up in what we read today, how Jesus, it's, it, you know, they're leaving Bethany, and they're walking along, and uh, Jesus is a, a little bit hungry, and he sees this fig tree that's full of leaves, but, but the fruit's not in season. A fig tree would have been full of leaves in March, April, May, but not served or produced fruit until probably around sometime in June. So so what's happening is Jesus is cursing this fig tree and you know as as a as a, a bystander I'm thinking why what what did this fig tree do to you this fig tree doesn't isn't supposed to be producing fruit right now and yet you tell this fig tree that it, it you're never going to produce fruit again. And then Jesus makes his way back into Jerusalem and he clears the temple. And as he clears the temple, then they make their way back out. And Peter notices that this fig tree, and among the other disciples, that this fig tree has actually shriveled up and died from the roots up. It has died from the foundation up, from the beginning up, from the from its place of nourishment up. It has died. And so Jesus is giving them this... Uh, this parable, he's showing them this in the midst of what he's doing. Again, as I've been saying, it's so neat to see as we read through the Gospels how what Jesus is teaching and what he's doing, what they're witnessing is so beautifully intertwined uh, with the events of the day, things that uh, that come into their experience, like with the Pharisees and with the temple, that they're not uh, they're not manipulating. These are events that are happening. And in and amongst all of this, Jesus is intertwining so many powerful stories. So what's this fig tree? This, this fig tree is Jesus acting out a parable that really represents Israel and represents these religious leaders that he's about to interact with where he's saying, listen, Israel is like, uh, is like it's a full of leaves but fruitless okay so he's cursing a tree that represents the withering away of Israel because they're rejecting the Messiah they're rejecting the very cornerstone they're rejecting uh, the one who has been prophesied of by all these prophets over the centuries that have been killed by the other religious leaders by the ancestors of these men and and so Jesus is using this then as an opportunity to say, hey, I, I am the Messiah and, and we need to come to a point of uh, faith, prayer, and forgiveness. So we see this confidence in the power of God saying, Israel has rejected me 
but you don't have to reject me. I've come for my house to be called a house of prayer for who? Not just for Israel, but for all nations. As Jesus consistently opens up the kingdom of heaven to all all of us to all of humanity so jesus creates this uh this link between his power uh our faith the prayers that we offer but also the forgiveness that we're extending to others you know we see this all throughout jesus's ministry that that we are to forgive our debtor as jesus forgives us so through our faith Uh, miracles are working, but it's not a confidence in myself. And it's not a, I need Jesus. Jesus is going to hear my prayer because uh, of my effort or my energy or strictly my performance or my persistence, but he's hearing it because I have... I have asked for and received forgiveness. I have extended forgiveness that I don't go to the throne of grace, that I don't approach the altar while I'm still uh, unwilling to forgive a brother or a sister. But I'm living this pattern of forgiveness. I'm not bearing I'm not bearing bitterness towards other people, but I'm extending love and forgiveness to them. And in that same way, I'm coming to the Father in Jesus' name and saying, I trust you. I have full confidence in who you are to work in my story. I have full confidence in you to be the salvation of my soul as we work that out together. And I, and, and, and I believe in the power of the name of Jesus. And so because I believe in that, I will pray in his name. And because I believe that he has forgiven me, I will extend forgiveness. And so that confidence in the power of Jesus to forgive me is confidence in the power of Jesus to give me the strength to forgive those who double cross me. Because I want to have no double-mindedness. I want to have a constant communication and relationship and a prayer without ceasing with my Heavenly Father and my Savior. And in order for me to do that, I must live a life of forgiveness. I must be willing to extend forgiveness in the same way that God has extended forgiveness to me and in the same way that I... Others, I am hoping, will forgive me when I mess up. So today I learned this about Jesus, and on this day I will this. How do you fill in those blanks today? Have yourself an outstanding day. Thanks for joining me. And uh, if you have any thoughts, questions, really cool things that you learned that you want to share with us, just pop it down in the comments on YouTube or leave a like, a subscription, a uh, review. And just to let us know that you're out there and that you're being blessed by these. Thanks for being here. Happy Monday. Bye.